Welcome to Storytime from Space, a project of the Global Space Education Foundation. To learn more about how you can support this exciting project, visit us at storytimefromspace.com. Now, let's join astronaut Steve Bowen on board the International Space Station. Let's see how this works out. I'm just trying to get myself settled in here. Okay, if you don't settle in space, you kind of just kind of float away. So, in order for me to stay on camera, I'm going to have to strap myself in a little bit here. Today, we're reading Totality, an Eclipse Guide in Rhyme and Science by Jeffrey Bennett. It's a really cool picture on the front of a total eclipse. So, Totality, an Eclipse Guide in Rhyme and Science by Jeffrey Bennett. A big kid science book. All right, so we're preparing for the 2023 and 2024 eclipses. The 2023 eclipse goes across the uh, west coast of the United States, and it's only an annular eclipse, which we'll learn about later. So it's not doesn't have that totality, that total effect that you'll get in 2024 as it comes up through Texas, all the way across the Midwest and Northeast of our country. And uh, in 2017, I had the chance to see uh, another eclipse in the United States. And uh, it was totally amazing to be in that area of totality. So we're going to read this book. I'm going to go through the, uh, the rhyme. And uh, we'll then come back and we'll talk about each of the pages as we go through. All right. So today's the day, it's finally come. I'll see a diamond on the sun. It happens somewhere almost every year, but rarely is that somewhere right here. We're talking a total eclipse of the sun, an incredible sight, second to none. In ancient times, it caused quite a fright when people saw daytime turn into night. Today we know it's a great cosmic dance and predict its movements far in advance. Three dancers there are, Earth, Moon, and Sun. When they line up, the eclipse has begun. This idea will become much more clear knowing Earth orbits the Sun once each year, while the Moon orbits Earth, showing phase after phase, repeating each 29 and one-half days. These are orbits are tilted, which helps to explain why eclipses do not form a monthly refrain. An eclipse of the sun can only arise when new moon and two orbits all coincide. This happens just about twice every year. At each of those times, an eclipse will appear. But only for those who are in the right place, and it's not always total because we're dealing with space. If the moon is off center or slightly too far, your eclipse will be partial or just annular. And even when it's all as it should be, you must be in the shadow or totality. The shadow is round and not very wide. Along a thin path, it rapidly glides. So if you'd like to see a total eclipse, find a good map and plan out your trip. You can use eclipse glasses to protect your eyes, but don't take them off till the moment arrives. That's when you'll see the brief diamond ring and then the corona, a spectacular thing. You'll look up in the sky ah, to see the stars in the day until, much too soon, the moon's out of the way. So be there with clear skies and all is now set for a breathtaking view that you'll never forget. And that's totality. So now we can go through and talk about a little bit about the science in each page. So as I said, this first page shows the two upcoming eclipses in the United States. And uh, this would be the region that you could probably uh, plan your trip as to when and how you'll be able to see a total eclipse. And there are apps and uh, websites, obviously, that will help you do that. And this picture is a, another spectacular picture. So it mentions in the text that you can see a diamond ring just before 
the uh, total eclipse occurs. As the last bit of the sun disappears behind the moon, you get this effect of a ring. And uh, it's quite startling. It's very brief. And then it goes away, and then you're in darkness. It's really amazing. So this is uh, an example of almost every single year, there's a total eclipse somewhere. So the last one we had here was in 2017, and that was this path along here, all the way from the West Coast down into the East Coast. And uh, that's the one I have to see. I hope to see the next one as well in 2024. So we're talking a total eclipse of the sun, an incredible sight, second to none. And so what that actually is, you're, the moon is blocking out the sun's rays and coming down and the ability of the sun to reach the earth. So the moon is blocking the sun. In ancient times, it caused quite a fright when people saw daytime turn into night. And it is quite startling. That's probably the only way to say it. And you can see uh, from this picture, how dark it actually gets, and it's pretty amazing. Today we know it's a great cosmic dance and predict its movements far in advance. And actually, uh, eclipses and the seasons and the motions of the sun and the stars have been studied for millennia. And this is an image of an ancient Mayan observatory uh, here where they may have actually attempted to predict eclipses. Three dances of our Earth, Moon, and Sun, when they line up, an eclipse has begun. As we mentioned, we're talking about the Moon blocking the light from the Sun on a certain portion of the Earth. So that's the area you're going to get a total eclipse. This idea will become much more clear when the Earth orbits the Sun once each year. So we circle the Sun every year. That's one year. is one complete orbit around the Sun. However, while Moon orbits Earth, showing phase after phase, repeating each 29 and one half days, the Moon orbits the Earth every 29 and a half days. So, in order for these things to sync up, uh, that's when an eclipse occurs. So, these orbits are tilted, which helps to explain why eclipses do not form a monthly refrain. So, the orbits of the Sun, of us around the Sun, and the orbit of the moon around the earth are not flat. You don't have perfectly flat orbits. They're actually inclined relative to each other. So you only get two points in each rotation where they coincide. And those are called nodes. When the orbit of the moon and the orbit of the earth around the sun coincide, the eclipse of the sun can only arise when new moon and two orbits all coincide. So in addition to being aligned, you also have to have the moon in between the sun and the earth. A lunar eclipse is the opposite of that. The uh, moon is behind the earth, so the light of the sun, which is where the moon gets its light. You see the moon, it's a reflection of the sun off of its surface. The moon doesn't generate its own light. So when you get a lunar eclipse, which is also very neat to see, uh, it happens uh, because the earth is blocking the light of the sun to the moon. This happens just about twice every year. At each of those times, an eclipse will appear. So about twice a year, just how the math works, uh, everything lines up and you get a, an eclipse. Uh, you get about two solar eclipses a year and two lunar eclipses a year. And they have to line up just right for you to be in the right place to see them. Uh, but only for those who are in the right place, it's not always total because we're dealing with space. So the uh, path of the sun and the position of the moon are really important. So there are different types of eclipses. You get the total solar eclipse, which is what this is. You also get a partial solar eclipse, which you'll get uh, same time as this. If you're not in the right place, you'll be able to see the sun blocked by uh, the moon, at least portions of it, depending on how far from here the totality you are. 
And finally, there's the annular eclipse, where the moon is just too far away. So it's small enough that it won't completely block the light of the sun coming around it. So that's what an annular eclipse looks like down here. And even when all is it should be, you must be in the shadow for totality. So the path, as we were just talking about, uh, is really important and your ability to see that. And this picture here actually illustrates what we're talking about, the those partial eclipses that you can get along the way. The shadow is round and not very wide. Along a thin path, it gla rapidly glides. So it's a very narrow corridor of the, uh, of the Earth that the total, total eclipse will occur. And so that's why you have to be in the right spot. And depending on where your location is, how long that total eclipse actually uh, will last is also impacted. So if you'd like to see a total eclipse, find a good map and plan out your trip. And there are maps and apps that will get you a really good path and a plan. You can find the optimal spot uh, where you'll be able to watch a, a total eclipse. When the day comes, the daylight will dim for more than an hour as the action begins. And while the actual total eclipse is a fairly short period of time, the, uh, the point at which the moon starts to cross in front of the sun and you start to lose a little bit of light, it's a total of about an hour, which is pretty pretty amazing. And along the way, depending on uh, the lighting conditions and the glasses that you have that will allow you to look at the sun, because you should never look at the sun directly um, without the uh, appropriate eye protection, uh, you can actually see that crescent of the sun with the moon uh, in there. Animals will start. To act very strange, patterns of light will gradually change. And the animals know. They can tell that it's getting dark and it shouldn't be getting dark. And so you'll see those reactions of uh, the birds and the dogs. And it's uh, very interesting. You can use the eclipse glasses to protect your eyes, but don't take them off till the moment arrives. And that's really important to keep yourself safe from the, the sun. Uh, don't look directly at the sun unless you have proper eye protection. That's when you'll see a brief diamond ring, and then the corona, a spectacular thing. And this is obviously a, a picture. Uh, you won't get that with your naked eyes, but uh, it is quite dramatic. And what you really should do is spend the time uh, to just be in awe, as it says. Uh, you'll look up in awe to see stars in the sky, stars in the day, until much too soon the moon's out of the way. And it's uh, really just... An amazing view. It's uh, one you'll never forget, and it's uh, it's very brief though, and so you have to really be in a good position to allow yourself to enjoy it. So be there with clear skies, and all is now set for a breathtaking view you'll never forget. And that's another really important thing. Uh, if it's a cloudy day, you'll still get the darkness, but you won't have that spectacular image of the uh, sun uh, being blocked out by the moon. Uh, you'll just see it get darker and darker and darker, and then lighter and lighter and lighter. Uh, so weather forecasts may impact where you want to be for the eclipses as they come up. And what's really kind of cool about this book in particular, though, is it has an index and a glossary uh, where you can figure out what all these words mean and what their explanations are. So uh, looking ahead for just a couple of years, uh, you really should... Make the, take the opportunity to go see the total eclipse as it passes over the United States. If you're not in a position to see the total eclipse, seeing the partial eclipse is pretty amazing as well. And it's uh, definitely an exciting thing to see. You will never forget it. I guarantee you that. Uh, it, it was, it's quite amazing. It's quite a startling thing. And uh, so that is Totality by Jeffrey Bennett. And I uh, hope you get a chance to see that solar eclipse next year. It's going to be uh, really something amazing. And hopefully the weather supports it as well. So thank you for your time. Thank you for joining us for Storytime from Space. We hope you enjoyed our story today from the International Space Station. We hope you'll join us again soon for another book reading or for one of our science experiments. Until next time, we look forward to reading together again soon.